We're at Radio 1 Raleigh, North Carolina, at Radio 1's headquarters. Brian Dawson, Wade Banner, thank you guys for showing up. Thanks for having us. Uh, we have the teacher and the student. Our first interview for Life's Choices was right here in the station with Wade Banner. Uh, and all he did was talk about following in the footsteps of Brian Dawson. Uh, two years ago, uh, who would have known we'd be right back here? Uh, and the thing that blows my mind is Brian is now on TV. In drive time, you're looking at that spot. Talk about the synergy between you two. How'd you meet? Um, I first met Brian. I've actually, I've been going to like a lot of Brian's events for years because we're both out of the same place. But um, actually meeting him and getting to work with him happened when I got the job at the radio station. What type of person did you think he was when you met him? Because it's tough to keep his attention. He's got so many things going on. I had no idea what to look forward to because you get a lot of preconceptions. Like people will tell you a lot of misinformation. And so I had been given a lot of misinformation about Brian um, before even entering into that relationship. But as soon as I came in the door, I mean, from my first day here, Brian's always been more than helpful to me and has helped to kind of guide my career. So then I was able to see that, you know, a lot of times it's just people hating and Brian is really a great person. Well, anybody that I've spoken to, uh, and I echo that, that knows him, uh, they know he's busy, but he's always giving. Uh, and people that do a lot don't have a lot of time for people that don't do a lot. And I think that's what yeah. they see is, is they see the outside. <laughs> and, and when he's coming, he's coming, he's going, trying to earn a dime. So, Brian, talk about it. Uh, you've got to earn some money. The radio's fun. Giving your time is fun. Right. But you have to earn a dollar because you have a lot of, a lot of things that you want to do and they need revenue streams. Mm -hmm. uh, so talk about those revenue streams and how important they are to you and how important they're going to be to Wade. Right. I mean, at the end of the day, it's all about building. You know, I'm all about building relationships and things that can happen for the future. You know, it's not as much about as the present as people think it is. Um, if you got a solid relationship, you might not have to have a lot of money, but a relationship can equal money, you know. So I've had an opportunity to build a unique relationship with Wade. You know, I'm gonna help everybody at the beginning to find out who, you know, who really wants it. And then I'll get more time and energy into those people. Cause I remember it was someone who helped me, you know, Wink Moody helped me get my job. He was the one who gave me that phone call. I was like, yo, Brian, somebody's leaving. We got a spot. You know, if he wouldn't have made that call, I wouldn't have got my job. So I have to always think about that when a new person come in and give them that opportunity and that extra boost. What are some of the positive qualities that you saw in Brian that you knew you were going to have to emulate if you were going to be successful? Brian is very social, intelligent, and he thinks outside the box. Like he might be doing one thing, but there's a reason behind why he's doing what he's doing. And so to me, it's always been interesting trying to understand why does he do this? Why does he do that? Well, Brian talked about working with a person uh, so he could find out how to hone his skills in entrepreneurship that led to a fashion show that netted him, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. What did you watch that he did that you wanted to emulate that was going to help bring you some money? I think <laughs> it sounds kind of funny when I um, think about it, but actually the one event that really made me go, wow, was New Year's at the convention center. That was the biggest event I've ever been a part of. Well, let expand on that a little bit because New Year's at the Convention Center, for those that don't know about it, that is the event for Raleigh Durham. Uh, Brian, talk about that and talk about Wade's role, where it started the first time and what it's evolved to now. Yeah, I mean, I've been doing New Year's events for a long time. We've been trying to find a place to make a bigger impact every year. So um, I, I teamed up with Seven Entertainment on this project, and so we did it at the Raleigh Convention Center, and it was, it was unbelievable. How many people attend? Um, how many people paid or how many people attended? We probably <laughs> how, many, about, <laughs> how many people paid? Let's go there. We, uh, we probably had about 4,000 paid, probably about 5,000 attended. They got in free. Um, it was too many holes in that building to, to contain everybody. But it was an exciting event. I love creating events. Um, I like the power of, a, of having a thought in your mind that nobody else got. And then having that day come where you bring people away from their schedules to that place at that one time, which all came from an idea that you had months ago, you know. When did you know he had it and he did something that stood out in your mind and said, you know what, he's gonna make some money? Right, well, I mean, I, like I said, the first thing about Wade that he's up on what's going on today, which is saying a lot, you know? I mean, he knows what social networking going, he knows how to get this online thing popping and he's studying the past because he knows what I went through. So I actually spend more time calling him, asking him questions about the things that he probably do with me. He probably tries to learn from me by watching me. I call him every day and wait, how to do this? Or can you do that? Can you do this to my Facebook? Or can you send this event out? So 
I think that was what, one of the things that stood out with, with me with him. And just, he's humble, you know, he wants to do it, which is, I think, half the battle. He's not scared to put himself out there and fail, which I think, you know, that first step gets you to that thousand miles. And a lot of people don't want to take that first step because they're scared to fail. Now, you talk about failing Wade. How forgiving uh, is your mentor when you do fail? Because I'm sure you have. Very, like, I, I've done a lot of things where I've made the completely wrong decision. And I would think that after, like, making a decision so bad, Brian would say, you know what? <laughs> You're done. <laughs> you go do that right. and let me do this. But Brian's always been like, no, even if it's like a, yo, you did that all wrong, but... He explains what I did wrong, why I did it wrong, and why I can't do it in the way that I did it. Right. So he helps me out a lot where I can understand from, like, understand the entire situation and how to make it better next time. Well, it sounds like iron sharpens iron, but Brian, uh, when you're in a position of authority and a position of responsibility, uh, why is it you gave him that latitude to make those mistakes, mistakes because it sounds as if it may have cost you money. Uh, right. Where does that money line and the mistake line, where's that drawn with you? Because it sounds like it's kind of a vacillatory line. Right. Well, and, and that goes back to, I work more off relationships than money because um, I've, I've, I've been in this business doing things for money and you never get there that way. You know, if you look at people who really well off in what they do, they were doing something that they love and the money kind of came. So money is kind of secondary. I mean, of course, you, you know, you got to make it, but the relationship is what's strong. And uh, when you can go through some things with, you know, a person like Wade and they stick behind you, you know, like I say, a lot of times I get read, you know, before people even meet me because I put myself out there to be judged so much that a lot of times some people don't even give me an opportunity to get to know me, to do stuff with me because they were told some things that may be true or that may not be true. So Wade, you know, came in and judged me from his relationship with me. And I'm sure he, you know, realized that some of the things he may have heard he never saw from me because he stepped in and you know, and tried to work with me. And, you know, some people shy away from that. They look at your success as their failure. And so people see you be successful and you shine in a big light and they don't understand that there's room for multiple people in that light. But what they do is we hate on things that we want to, that we think by hating on it, that we bring it closer to us where we can feel better about somebody else's failures or successes. So that's one thing I say about Wade, that he's always been like behind me. When I do something positive, I always see him happy about it and it means a lot all right let's expand on that people don't know how how important it is for the left hand to have a right hand mm -hmm. uh, for your fingers to have a thumb uh, try to pick something up without your thumb uh, recently you went to LA to handle the BET Awards what did you leave Wade the youngest in charge in charge of yeah well Wade actually ran the board uh, for the show so he was producing the show he was the one who was you know really controlling how it sounded and he also did, he went over and beyond, which he always do for me, is that he recorded all the audio from the interviews. So we got the real audio to go with the video. Because, you know, when you're shooting a video, the audio and the stuff could be off. So we didn't have to worry about as much of the audio issues that we had. So he really made the whole show because we could sync every interview and everything we did with the audio that he collected. So, so did you just say that you had Wade Banner out in L.A. with you? Well, Wade was here in, in, in the studios here in Raleigh. He's supposed to go. We're going to make him go next year. So next year you're going to get him out of Durham. We got to get him out there and check it out next year. Okay. That's big time. Wade, what are the three biggest things that you've gleaned from working with Brian Dawson? And, and I want you to look directly into the camera and tell that young person, if you get an opportunity to be around a mover and a shaker, uh, what is it that you have to follow? What do, you, what do you have to watch out for? Because you don't get this opportunity often. I think the most, um, the most important thing that Brian's taught me is to see where he fails and learn from his failures so that I don't have to go through that exact same failure myself. Uh, also, see when he wins, why did he win? Analyze that all the time. And then uh, look to see what I can do that's similar, but to build on top of what he's already done. So like, if he's doing something, then what can I do to do that same thing, but make it bigger and better? How do you feel uh, when you're in public places or you're in private venues uh, and you're with Brian and the attention goes to him and you know in your heart, I can do that, but they're not talking about me. Uh, Brian's doing this, Brian's doing that, and I want to get there. Do you start getting a little envious? Nah, actually, I love it. Like, because that's, it allows me to see where I'm going to be. Like, I can look at that and say, okay, Brian's getting all of the love now, but he's teaching this to me. So I know that I'm going to get here and possibly above that. So I'm excited to see anything that's good for him. I'm excited. The Source Power 30, when he made it, then that's like, okay. So then in 10 years, 
ain't no reason why I shouldn't be on there. Yeah, I think when we talk about, you know, the commonalities of success or being successful, even though everybody blazes their own path, um, I've never seen him or felt like he was going to quit at doing anything. And that's pretty much how I am. I mean, you can get tired, but quitting is really not an option. But, you know, I, I would just say, you know, from Wade's standpoint, his challenges has been to not only understand what my path has been, but again, is to figure out how he gonna blaze his own path because no two paths are the same. So his challenge has been trying to figure out, okay, I see how Brian did it and this is what he did and I've taken time to understand that. Now, how am I gonna do this? Because it ain't gonna be the same. So he'll understand and learn from my pitfalls and my successes and how to navigate to where he gonna go. But his ultimate challenge is to find out what's new in terms of how he gonna become the person he want to become. So that's that's his challenge. I see it in him every day. Um, I mean, there's no quit in him. I, and I, I like that part about him. Every day is, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do to, you know, to get better? So, Well, young people, you've had a unique opportunity to meet two of the finest DJs, entrepreneurs, uh, the teacher and the student. Uh, I'm sitting here giggling on the other side of this camera uh, knowing that there's a young person that's going to benefit because they saw this interview. Uh, you guys gave your time. This is the second and third time that you've given your time. Uh, I can't keep up with you, Brian. I've tried to, to run with <laughs> you a little bit. Uh, how many hours do you put in a week? Well, I actually rest more now. I just had my second son. Um, his name is Caleb. He's, he turned one um, first week of July. So I rest more now, especially since he came. But I exercise. I try to eat right. I feel good. I bring a lot of that, that athletic spirit I used to have from being an athlete into my into my real life. I, I mean, I, I work off and on. You know, I th when I think about work, I think about my mother. She worked two jobs. And she worked from seven in the morning to seven at night. And she got 15 minute breaks twice a day plus a lunch. That's work. I think I'm getting creative in my mind. So I might start working at 12, one o'clock at night. You know, I might work for 25, 30 minutes and I might be in a whole different zone. I'm a dreamer. I, I do a lot other than just focusing on. That's what a lot of people be wanting, like my ADHD be kicking in. But that's me dreaming, thinking about things that I really want to do. But I don't consider that work. I just consider that thought process that I put together so I mean I could be working in the middle of the day and take the rest of the day off like I did today and watch my son play basketball you know that's I work when it comes though. well I'll tell you part two of this uh, movie Life Choices is coming around and we hope to be able to expound on each one of you individually uh, this is a cumulative effort from a lot of different people yeah. so this is just one small slice we're going to put a bunch of this on YouTube and Facebook and make sure you guys get copies of this but Young people, we're looking at Brian Dawson and Wade Banner, the teacher and the student, the youngest in charge, and the man, the B-Spot. TV show Fox 50. If you didn't know it was happening, it's happening right now. Go to his website. Check him out. Support him. Wade Banner, he's everywhere. You guys right now, you have a great opportunity to be like these guys. Mm -hmm. You just have to put the work in. Brian, Wade, thank you very much. Right. You. Now, before you go, I know you're about yes, to go, sir. but I want to interject this as you're doing YouTube. And we talk about work. And I'm, I got to get this last story. Michael yes, Jordan. Sir. Okay. You ever notice when Michael Jordan was in his prime when he played basketball, not only was he the best player on the floor, but he worked the hardest. So That's he had right. The, he had the hardest worker and the best player all in one. I can say this about Wade. We do more free stuff than we do paid. Is that right? Way more. I Didn't mean, know it's that. It's probably mm -hmm. a six or seven to one ratio, you know. I mean, people don't know that, you know. And it. So to proceed to be this, you know, to be greedy and to be doing a lot of stuff that's in the limelight to get paid, People don't pay attention to all the projects that we just do for free, you know, like, they, I mean, we, we did a, um, a high school tour and we were supposed to pick one school to win. Well, not, it wasn't a high school tour, it was a school tour through the schools for the EOGs. And we were supposed to pick one school to win and we went through five or six schools and we didn't want to tell them, no, the, the winner got us coming back for free right. to DJ. So we just went back to all the schools. All five So schools. we ended up doubling that, that whole tour for no credit, but that's what it was about, is to do it for the kids. Yeah. And what y'all doing is important, man. Life choices is, is, is what it's all about. You know, that's what we sitting here talking about, making good choices in life to give yourself an opportunity to do things later and uh, plant and seed. So keep doing what you're doing, man. It's exciting to see what you do, the emotion and, and the love and the zest you put into what you do. Um, I don't think you've ever discussed money uh, with me. Ever since I've known you, it's always been about the love and I know it's gonna be something big for you behind that. So just keep it up. Well, I tell you what, you, you learn from folk uh I have to give uh, Pastor Anthony Darrington the credit for that. Uh, he said, if you sow some seed, you may not see him come up, mm. but you know that somebody's going to get the harvest. So you may not be around for the harvest. You got to put something in. You can't get anything when you're fist balled up. Uh, if you don't put anything out there, you can't get anything back. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So thank you very much. And that's it. Life's Choice is the movie right here from K97.5 Radio 1 in Raleigh. Wade Banner, the youngest in charge, and Brian Dawson, the B-Spot. Thank you.